Hey, thank you for joining the First Middle Church of Christ on this Sunday morning. We're glad to have you. Hey, be sure to go over to our social media platforms and like and share, as well as our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to it and pass it along. Some great messages over there as well. Hey, our lesson today is called A Generation at Risk. It comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24, 25, and verses 44 through 46. Here's another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as a worker slept, his enemies came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. See, God has a purpose for this generation, and I would like to challenge you and all those who hear this message, a challenge to build this church up to be a strong church like never before. If we build it, people will come. Do you want a church that will have impact in the community? One that when we talk, people will listen? Nine months, 24 hours of seven days after VJ Day, the largest number of life births took place in America in its history, 73 million. Some will hate the 40s because you know nothing about it. And that would mean many people you and I know hate almost everything because they know so little about most things. Now, this is not the time to tell you new things, but to encourage you to dream great things. For the purpose of God is about the world and the generation at risk. The generation at risk and the dreams of God. This generation by the millions, we must have never before called this generation into a road less traveled. Millions are taking a different road than the kingdom road. Wide and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many follow it. Straight and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, but only a few find it. Psalms 11.3, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? You see, once in a while, Hollywood would do something constructive. But it mainly does more destruction than constructive. But if he can stand the things that are constructive, you wouldn't be standing many things in this world. So you would have to get another world to be in, and you would ruin it if you were in it. Come with me to Iowa, to a field of dreams. Young Iowa farmers, corn's up, needs rain, and it doesn't look too good. The whole family begins to worry about what to do. Well, we can't make it rain. We feel the, we, we feel the field, and we can't do anything about it. Then one day, the young farmer heard a voice out in the cornfield. He said, if you build it, he will come. The farmer had no idea what to build. So as time moves on, only the four-year-old daughter believes her dad. If you have large enough dreams, something important can occur. Even when all of life seems to be crushing you. When the foundations are perishing, what will the righteous do? After a little while, a stranger walks out of the cornfield. Why, it's the young farmer's dad. They did not have a good relationship. Dad would have been a great ball player, but life wasn't fair. And he wasn't either. They begin to play catch. Then the whole thing starts to unfold. And if he would build a baseball field, all of the great ball players would come and play out in the field. If someone would do that today, they would be considered insane. And as the movie is ending, thousands of cars are coming out to see what was planted in the field of dreams. If you can't dream any larger than your daily life, you cannot address a generation of risk. From 1946 to 1964 was the largest single generation in American history. They are the baby boomers. But now we have the boomer rankers, and they are the ones who don't pay any attention to the Bible, Christ, the gospel, and the purpose of the church and truth. They want designer churches to meet their every need. In 1890, that was the gay 90s. Now we have a completely reinterpreted what is gay and 90s. 
600,000 American sons, brothers, grandfathers, fathers, the largest body of brothers in the history of American warfare, died at Gettysburg in the battlefield in some of your states. When you march into a field and get hit with a 50 caliber soft lead bullet, that's it. There is no field of dreams for you. In 1910, 9 out of 10 people lived on a farm. 13% lived in cities. In 1980, 2.7% lived on a farm. In 1990, less than 2% lived on a farm. In 1920, people could only take so much pressure. When people are under pressure, they go to church and hear only what they want to hear. Then we have the Depression. Now the decades are from 1939 to 1945, World War II. It was in that era that parents produced the generation at risk. We produced a generation of people that are spooked by Spock. The generation at risk can't read. They want to see action rather than read. The generation at risk wants things now. And if the churches don't give it to them, they will go to a church that will give it to them. In the 50s, some of the people will start remembering. You see Nazi collapse in May of 45. And then here comes Papa Eisenhower. His theme was peace, progress, and prosperity. But did you get that in the 50s? You see, the generation at risk are growing up, and they're about to be in the 60s. They are about to be hippies and yuppies. They are about to be the very things that some of us talked about in the 60s and 70s. Families didn't want to upset their children. Spock told all these 18, 19-year-old mothers not to be negative. Give them what they want. God cannot be rediscovered in the church or in the country until he is recovered in the families. By the time it's chaos in the families, the chaos goes to church. And by the time the chaos goes to the church, it goes to the school board. Parents have time for TV, but they don't have time to read to them at night. Sending your kids to church or church camp will not straighten out the generation at risk. It has to start at the parenting structure of the home. In 1949, Russia tested the first nuclear bomb. Are all your children in church today? Two generations, the boomers and the boomer rankers, is the ones that are not filling the churches today because they don't hear the church or see the church with the vision of God. See, 1950, we had the Korean conflict. 1957, TV entered the homes of the average families. The average family watches 57 hours of TV a week. The average church family doesn't resemble 57 hours of Bible study, prayer, or witnessing under any circumstances. The decade of the 60s, the central question, what is the meaning of life? And the church failed to communicate that the source of life is not in sex, drugs, but the source of life is in the creator of the universe. 108 million Americans are New Agers or cult participants. 100 million Americans are nothing at all. The generation of risk was not addressed by the churches with the dreams of God. 1960s, we had drugs and sex revolutions. The Vice President London B. Johnson became the president because of the assassination of John F. Kennedy in November of 63 in Dallas, Texas. Put a man on the moon in a decade. We had Vietnam. When the foundations are perishing, what will the righteous do? In 1960s, sons, fathers, brothers, grandfathers died in the killing fields of Vietnam. But 165,000 committed suicide after returning from Vietnam and seeing how America treated them. August the 8th, 1974, President Richard Nixon resigns as President of the United States because of the Watergate scandal. 1960s almost destroyed America. In 1970s, people began to bounce back. Religion was on the rise. The decade of the 80s continued on the down the slippery slope. America Cultures has been on a journey of self-centeredness for over 50 years. It's in education. It's in media. It's in everything that shakes people. Commitment restricts and restrains and directs freedom. You can be committed to the church and make a lot of choices. 
Everybody wants their freedom. Commit versus choice. The gospel calls for commitment. But many respond to commitment because that restrains choices. We have gone from attachment to rebellion. Preachers have been known to go on for hours after and in the conclusion. We have gone from attachment to rebellion and it sounds something like this. Oh man, this was in the 90s. We have passed the 90s, but not many people believe that. You see, 2 plus 2 still equals 4. The sun is still 92 million plus miles away. My age has nothing to do with that as to whether this is an accurate statement or not. When your children say this is the 90s, Japan is inspired to be the greatest nation in the world. It starts with their children. You see, in Japan, you don't hear a baby crying Hiroshima or Nagasaki or any other large cities. Japan's children go to school five and a half days a week. They go to school from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays. Japan doesn't have a generation at risk. But do you know who does? America. It doesn't start watching TV. It doesn't start in school. It starts in the family structure, every family. Do you want to get the nation in a field of dreams again? If you build it, he will come. American culture has a generation of risk that has changed commitment into choices, changed self-sacrifice into self-centeredness, changed attachment to rebellion. If the church does not dream the dreams of God, then how would he come if we don't build it? We need to call the generation of risk into the kingdom of God before Christ returns. I believe that we are living in the last days. Time is unfolding right before our eyes, and we still have a generation at risk. Generation X are those born from 1965 to 1981, the generation once called slackers. Gen Xers were young during the tech bubble, but when they come of age, housing was a lot more expensive. Generation X encompasses the 44 to 50 million Americans born between 1965 and 1981. This generation marks the period of birth decline after the baby boom and is significantly smaller than previous and succeeding generations. Generation X is less committed to one employer and more willing to change jobs to get ahead than previous generations. They adapt well to change and are tolerant of alternative lifestyles. Generation X is ambitious and eager to learn new skills, but want to accomplish things on their own terms. Gen X wants to live rather than to live to work. They appreciate fun in the workplace and espouse a work hard, play hard mentality. Gen X managers often incorporate humor and games into work activities. Generation Y. Born between 1982 and 1994, Generation Y, also known as Gen Y, Echo Boomers, Net Generations, and Millennials are generally referred to as this new impact generation. At 81 million strong, Gen Yers represent the largest population segment in the United States since the baby boomers. 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger accident. I'm sure most of us either was watching it or heard about it the minute it happened. During Desert Storm in a 100-hour battle, fewer than 300 and more than half of those were killed in accidents. 4,625 were murdered on the streets of major cities in the United States in that same 100 hours. Does that sound okay to you? Woodstock, 400,000 attended. Twice that number reported being there. Three times that number thought they were there. Woodstock is a single signal of a generation at risk. It wasn't the 400,000 weird kids. They got the weirdness at home because the family structure is not stable. A day in this generation will always be remembered. September 11, 2001. America's soil was attacked again and we lost 2,973 lives. 
a generation at risk. Church attendance rose, and some even thought the end of the world was coming. Gen Wires grew up with technology and relay on it to perform their jobs better. Armed with Blackberries, Droids, smartphones, laptops, and other gadgets, Generation Y is plugged in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This generation prefers to communicate through email and text messaging rather than face-to-face -face contact. Gen Y doesn't know much about interaction. Gen Y craves attention in the form of feedback and guidance. They appreciate being kept in the loop and seek frequent praise and reassurance from their friends on social media sites like Facebook, MySpace, Twitter. Now it's called X. Interaction skills are slowly slipping away from this generation because they are so engulfed in the technology that they lack social skills, confidence, and decision-making skills. Because of the technology that is at this generation's fingertips, this is increasingly drama, bullying, suicides, peer pressure, the need to be accepted. Gen Z, born from 1995 to 2012. 23 millions and growing rapidly. Gen Z kids will grow up in a highly sophisticated media and computer environment. Gen Z will be more internet savvy and experts than their Gen Y forerunners. The generation at risk, the purpose of the church, and the dreams of God. Is the church meeting the needs of the people in the community? The church needs to dream the dreams of God. If it wants to grow, are you willing to meet the needs?